Chiwiwi. Hey, Chiwiwi. All right, so Don't get offended, brother. You're not that. You're not that ugly. Just a little bit. I'm ugly too, brother. I'm a comedian, bro. I'm a comedian. I'm about, I'm about to to go like Joe Rogan, make money. Best podcast in the business. The name is Show Me the Money. Welcome back to the Show Me The Money podcast, and look who decided to show up today. What's good, bro? How we doing? Doing, doing very good. How about you? Dude, it's good to have you back, bro. All the all the people in the comments were, were hating. Were hating. They were like, really? where's Moicano? Don't yeah. hate Matty, motherfuckers. I'm, try, I'm out here trying to keep the show alive for the fans, yeah. bro, but Moicano's back. I'm very excited to have him. Moicano's the life of the show, so everyone in the comments last... Two, three weeks was like, a lot of people were like, I'm not even watching it. <laughs> no, no. Here. Fuck that. Guys, you have to realize we still are fighters. Yeah, guys. Me and Gilbert are still fighting. So sometimes you, you, you like so much training, so much stuff. But let me tell you something. I'm happy to be here. I always, I, I love the environment, you know, Kyle, Brad, you, everybody. I, I love to be here, brother. And it's good to talk about some MMA to be in some different place, you know. Because usually I'm at the fucking gym training. Yeah. I love to be five five years from now. We're just doing podcasts, but <laughs> I still have some bread to make, my brother. I have to, I have to, to get the fucking money. Yeah. All uh, right. Well, we gotta address the elephant in the room first and foremost. Our guy Gilbert came up short this past weekend. I went big on him, bro. We had a huge watch party. We had like thirty people here. Came up short. I would put a lot of. A lot of cash on him. Um, I will say, I think he showed a lot of heart. There wasn't really a time in the fight where I think he was hurt at all. No. You know, I think Sean had a, a pretty solid game plan, implemented the jab pretty well. The grappling went just like I expected it. You know, I thought Gilbert was just fine there. Like, he was never th threatened at all in the grappling department. Um, but Sean was able to just put a good game plan in place. And, you know, I even gave Sean a shout out. I thought it was a good, good overall performance. I mean... Um, again, like I told you guys in the last episode, he's a guy that I typically root for, but I'm always going to back Gilbert, of course. But yes, yeah. um, what did you think or what did you make of the fight overall? Matty, I, I like Sean Brady as a, as a fighter. I think he's solid. And, yeah. and he, he seems to have a, like, to be a cool dude, right? To be a solid guy. But unfortunately, uh, man, Gilbert Burns may be one of the best motherfuckers that I know. Like, he's very... Gilbert Burns is very humble, work hard. The guy is, is fucking unbelievable. Yeah. How nice he is, bro. So uh, it's like I have, looks like I I have lost, you know, because I was watching the rounds. Yeah. But I still think I still think he did good. I, I I see a lot of people saying it was a domination. I don't think it was a domination. Yeah. I think he lost most of the rounds. Yeah. But but because small things. Yeah. You know, small things. Sean was like getting the takedown on the last minute, or or they were reversing, or or the, he was putting on the cage. Overall, was like he lost for me at least four rounds, mm -hmm. but uh, w were competitive rounds. You know, yeah, he lost on the detail in every in each round. So, yeah. uh, but it is what it is. You know, I, I I'm I'm sure he's very. He's feeling sad right now. He's, he's feeling bad. But yeah. I hope he get back to the podcast soon because in the end of the day, uh, this is our job. But this is business. Fuck that, brother. Fuck. Let's go. Let's keep working. Let's keep training, yeah. doing the podcast. And, and there is no other option. Just get better, improve. And Gilbert is still uh, on the top. He's still, still one right of there. the best fighters yeah, in the world. Look, we, we see it all the time in the UFC. One... Huge performance can change anything. I mean, it really, really can. I mean, I think about, like, it's a different scenario, but I think about that Dustin Poirier performance against Benoit. Like, Dustin was kind of out of the, the, the yeah. title opportunity. And, man, he just put on elite performance, comeback performance, in the round two knockout. And he's right there again for the belt. So, like, you know, again, anything And he did a happen. good job against Islam. Yeah, exactly. Anything can happen in this sport. So, I'm hoping next week, 
It'll be the first time in a while. The three of us are all back. Yeah. It'll probably be your last show before your fight, I assume. Yes. Um, yes. Which you guys tune into that. That's at the, the 28th of the month. 28th. 28th yes. of the month. So Moicano in France. I think I'm going to be going. I'm getting tickets. I think me and Kyle will be traveling and, and, and coming for that. So, but yeah, I mean, again, it was a, it was a, it was a tough fight. Uh, I lost a lot of cash on it. I even, uh, I, I got you message me. I did. Yeah, what you message me say, what do you think about the fight? I say, brother, I think Gilbert Wendes will win. Oh yeah, yeah, before the fight. Before the fight, yeah, yeah. Because, like stylistically, they 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 are very similar. Agreed. Right, they are very similar. But I thought the striking of Gilbert would be a little bit better than than Sean, but yeah. he showed some improvement. Yeah, and, and it was a good fight overall. Hundred percent. Yeah, he definitely did. You know, what's funny is. Uh, you know, I make all my, my content, my videos on Instagram, TikTok, and I made that that hype video betting on Gilbert and then some some images betting to bet 12 on him and a bunch more money. And uh, Sean, after the fight, like liked all my videos <laughs> like Eddie unfollowed me, bro. He unfollowed he me. He unfollowed you. So I think he unfollowed me before the fights. He probably saw me picking Gilbert. But okay. like, you got to know I'm a bag my dude, obviously. Of course, of course. So I think he didn't want to see the content. He unfollowed yeah. me on social media and then. The same day after the, or maybe the day after the fight, I get all these notifications. He's like liking my videos because I had all this money on Gilbert. So, yeah. you know what? But he followed again? He followed no, you he again? Never, I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. I didn't look. But, but I do you have did. a problem with that? Do you? Yeah, you know, what's funny is like we're both Philly guys, Pennsylvania. So I always like followed him. And, you know, again, I've won money on Sean Brady. I, I took him by submission against Calvin Gaslam. I loved following his career and uh, betting on him all the time. And I liked watching him. But, Again, it was just a clash of he went up against my dude. Of course. That's just but the, I'm that's asking you about game. that because some people, like, they say, ah, he unfollowed me, so I'm not going to follow him back. Some people, No, I didn't, I didn't unfollow yeah, him. Yeah, fuck no, that, no, bro. No, yeah. I think that's kind of petty if you yeah. if you unfollow someone. Like, I follow people I want to see their content, yes. not whether they follow me or not. So Yeah, that's but. that's a good way to look because some people, they have their ego so big yeah, yeah, yeah. that they say, <laughs> he's not following me, I'm not going to follow you. <laughs> I'm asking because right now, right yeah. now it's crazy because social media now is like real oh, life. For sure, for sure. You know, people assume stuff and they saw. Yeah. I like the way you do. Like, if you like the content, watch. Yeah, yeah. Never, like I said, it wasn't personal. I'm gonna always back my guy. Just like I'm gonna back. Maybe you. Maybe he's unfollow me because I was. Too- <laughs> let's see. Let's, let's see. see. I let's doubt see, it. Bro. I don't think he would unfollow the fighters. I think it's just like if someone's betting or picking against him, I feel like a lot of fighters like are like, oh, I don't want to see his content. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I always have to pick somebody when I, this is what I do. I bet on sports. I bet on fights. I bet on games. Why is not not showing? (laughs) I think he blocked me for probably. Nah. He's not fucking showing. Let me see. (laughs) Let me see. (laughs) Look. No, it's right there. Yeah, but go go to the following list. It might just be the internet. <laughs> Why can't I see? I don't know. It might be your phone. Or yeah, yeah, fucking. Who cares, bro? Who cares? Who cares? Anyways, <laughs> let's move on. We got a couple things to cover on the rest of the card, right? There were some good fights on the card that I want to talk about. Steve Garcia, bro. He continues to just knock out, finish everyone. Did you were you able to see that fight? Steve Garcia. He gets he got a, a round one knockout again, bro. He's just he's on an absolute. Ah chair. yes, he he was fighting the the Canadian guy. Yeah, yeah. So he's now he so he won uh, four straight fights by knockout. He he beat Kyle Nelson. Um, Kyle Nelson, yeah. Actually, Canadian. five straight fights by knockout, bro. All in the first and second round. He's on an absolute tear in the UFC. Man, but I uh, mean, I don't think he's good. I mean, but do you think the right the right matchup that, that can like take him down? Wear him down a little bit. He lost to Luis Pena. That was a long time ago. I mean, that it was, was 2020. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a long he time He lost to Pena. And then he's been hurt in a couple of fights where yeah. he's, he's rallied and came back. But yeah. he does, he's he's excited, bro. He gets people out of there. Got to give him, him credit. Five fights in a row. He, a lot of the gambling world just keeps hammering him by knockout. Every he fight. was the underdog, right? No, he was uh, It was a very close fight. I think it was, a, it was very close odds, but I think he was a small favorite. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one. Natalia Silva, another fight on the card. Uh, that fight ended up going the distance somehow, but she could be future champ. I don't know if you saw her fight against Andrade. I saw. I saw. A uh, very dominant performance. Very do, you, good. do you think so? 
I think she was very good off her back foot. It's just her style. Style, yeah. It's her style. Like, yeah. I tried to play her inside the distance or by... And stuff. I was wrong on this fight because I thought, okay, Natalia Silva, I think she, uh, the, her background is taekwondo, right? Or yeah. kickboxing, I don't know. But she always fight walking backwards and using the kicks. And I thought, Jessica Andrade is a monster. She gonna get... She yeah. gonna she gonna find the the spot and gonna punch her and yeah. and maybe gonna hurt or maybe shoot for takedowns. But Natalia Silva showed a lot of uh, show a good cardio, good endurance, good endurance, and was a good fight. But I don't know. I, I'm not convinced. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean Andrade was so dominant at 115 when she was at 125. It's just these girls are huge next yeah. to her. You know, she's she's not a big chick. So. No. Um, what other fights were there just to go over real quick? I like the way. Sean Brady and follow Maddie. Why? <laughs> All right. That, what other fight? I wanna that's th a good topic. <laughs> <laughs> what other fight I want to go over? Did you see Cody Durden versus Matt Snell? I, I saw. Cody Durden in short notice gets a round two guillotine. Impressive performance on, on very short notice for him. Uh, Matt Snell, I believe, retired. I think he retired. He retired? I, don't quote me on that, but I think he... I think he Put his gloves down or something. I might be dead wrong about that. So, all right, let's move on, bro. I want to talk about uh, UFC Noche coming up, dude. I don't know how much you know about this card, but just for the fans to know and understand. UFC Noche. Noche, yeah, yeah, Noche. Uh, Noite. <laughs> yeah. I, just for the fans, the MMA fans to know, here's some things to know about uh, th this card, right? First 1080p TV broadcast of a UFC event in ESPN history. First time the USC has ever had haptic seats during an event, which provide force <laughs> feedback. Did you know this? So if you're no. watching the fight and someone knocks out a fighter, your seat starts vibrating. Oh, it's like a, it's like uh, special like a movie. Yeah, like it's, movie. Like, it's like a movie, right? Movie theater. <laughs> yeah. Then the event will feature eight new octagon girls, six of which are native born Mexican women and two are second generation Mexican. And then for the first time ever, the USC is granted a sponsor the title partner status by rebranding UFC 306 to, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, Rayada. Rayada. No, yeah, no shade at USC. So. Uh, and then last but not least, this is the first card in the sphere, which obviously we all know, but it's going to be a, a crazy thing to watch. I'm a game time decision right now. If I'm going to this card, I'm going to make a decision here in the next couple of days. I kind of want to go it's check It's this it out. Saturday. It's this Saturday, bro. This Saturday. So I got to ask. How much money you're going to spend to go over there? Uh, it's not that crazy. All the ticket prices went down, you know, probably a few thousand on tickets and a couple thousand on just flights and everything and there and back and some travel. But, but why you want to go? The only reason I want to go, because I don't think the, it's the greatest card in the world. I think it's a decent card. It's just the sphere, the sphere. And it'd be cool to see it. You know, <laughs> let me ask you something. Yeah. The sphere is something new. It's never had a live sporting event. I believe it's more of like a show. Like, yeah. Like shows entertainment. So, knowledge. do you want to check if it's... Very... I want to see... Yeah, it's supposed to be a completely different watching atmosphere. Like, instead of being around an octagon, like, I don't know. I don't even know that much about it. I just heard some some crazy things. Of, of It's a whole different experience as far as watching fights. So, I'm thinking about it. But since I got to ask you, since this whole card is Mexicans, I got to ask you, overall, who do you give the edge to as a fighter in general? The Brazilians or the Mexicans? Who Brother, you got? If it's MMA, 100% Brazilian. If it's boxing, Mexico yeah. is better. But but I don't know. The, since since they got like Grasso and all this, like, uh, what's the name of the, the 135 champion? 125. Moreno. Oh, Brandon uh, Moreno. Brandon Moreno. All these Mexican fighters, yeah. they're trying to... To push, right? Yeah, Mexican yeah. fighters. Since Moreno's not on this card, bro. I mean, yeah. he's taking a lot of time off, but... Why do you think he's dead? I think he got fatigued. I think he was just fighting a ton over yeah. a few years. Yeah, especially you know? against Figueiredo. Dude, he's fighting all these killers in his weight class for so long. It it plays a toll. It's got to play a toll on him, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I, but I, I, think, I think overall, Brazilians have the best, like, more champions and stuff. Because yeah. I think they sport are, uh, are big in Brazil. Bigger right, than right. in Mexico. 100%. All right, well, we got to dive into the betting picks, bro. Have you been doing picks? You haven't been doing picks? Yes. Lately? You have? Yes, but not, not not as much. Like Not as much? Yeah, okay. I didn't do for for, yeah. for this card. 
Norcia because it's just a lot of stuff. Training and I understand, fucking. I understand. Well, like, we'll, we're going to briefly go through some of these fights here. If you guys haven't signed, if you guys need a place to get some action on the fights, go check out our sponsor. Shout out to Fliff. They're in the description of the YouTube channel. Use code show me for some free coin to get some action with on the fights. And as a quick recap, I need Moicano here because we went on a cold streak on the show parlays. We're now one in four on the parlays. We're only down under 50 bucks. So we're about even, right? Remember parlays, you hit one out of five, you're still pretty close to even. If we hit this next one, we're back in the green. So we're going to go through all these cards, or we're going to go through some of the decent fights on the card. Kyle, why don't you bring up just the USC uh, site because we can just kind of scroll through here. We're going to go through the betting odds on some of these fights. I want to get your opinion on my favorite fight of the night here. We're going to go right to it. Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez. Lopez is a minus 190 favorite. Ortega, a plus 140 dog. Ortega has been around the block, very well-rounded, very durable. But Diego is a monster, bro. What do you yeah. think about this fight? I don't know. You tell me. His last performance, I didn't think it was that great, really? but was against a different opponent. And yeah. you have to give the credit that he took a fight in four hours notice. So like, it was very, very... Yeah. Yeah, it's tough for both guys, right? Tough for both guys. Like the short notice guy, it's tough, obviously. I think it's easier for the... Sh Oh, we talked about this before on the pod. Yeah. For Dan Ige in that spot. Especially because he lives in Vegas. He and was he's training. In shape, yeah. He's in shape. Yeah. He 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 was supposed to fight somebody like a month later. So he was yeah. training. One thing I one thing is they offer the fight. You like you if you, you don't have a fight and but they still it, it's not an easy job for both fighters. But yeah. I don't know. I still think. Diego Lopes is going to be too much for Brian Ortega. I but agree, Brian agree. Ortega is tough. And yeah. like, do, you, do you remember when he almost submitted Volkanovski? Oh, how could I everybody you know? forget that one? That was, so, so that's yeah. what I'm telling you. Like, he always dangerous. Brian yeah. Ortega is dangerous. Right. No matter well, what. Did so, you see, no, you see Ortega's fight against Yair Rodriguez? I think it was his last one. Yes. Yeah, he almost yes. finished. So Yair yes, I remember. Well, that was down. a big, long time ago, right? Wasn't that long. I mean, Ortega. So Ortega was supposed to fight Diego Lopez at USC 303. Remember that fight got canceled. They bring Danny Gay in, but yeah. I think it was his fight before that. Let me double check that. Um, but I just think that Yair Rodriguez, like Lopez, is a better version of Yair because he's got good striking and power, but his jujitsu can match Ortega. And I just think that his hands are going to be too much for Brian Ortega. I saw I, the uppercut to Sadiq Yusuf that that Lopez landed on him, put him out cold. Um, you know, he finished, yeah, he knocked out Pat Sabatini, which, you know, people can say that's not the most impressive KO in the world, but he's putting guys out. He's finishing guys. Dan Ige is just a guy that doesn't really ever get finished. Yeah. You know, so I don't look at that as a bad win for Lopez. I think if anything, like you said, it was a tough spot to get a last minute guy in shape in Vegas. And he still looked very dominant in that win, in my opinion. So I love Diego Lopez on the money line here. I also think I'm going to sprinkle on that knockout prop. You think he can it's find good. The, the prop? It's like four to one, I believe. You think he can find Ortega's chin in this? I think so. Even though Brian Ortega's chin is solid, right? Yeah. He got beat by Max Holloway like 20, 20, 2019. Yeah. A long time ago, but still. And he survived. Yeah. He survived like five rounds. Oh, no, it was the fourth round TKO. Yeah. They stopped that fight. They stopped the fight, but it was yeah. not like he was. Right, right. It was. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was, he, he was still fighting. Yeah. So. But we've seen him get stopped with by the hands. Um, and then uh, the yeah. Yair Rodriguez fight. Or hold on. Yair yeah, Rodriguez fight, he got the injury, right? The one he lost. Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm like looking at that confused right now on the USC side. I'm like, <laughs> he ended up finishing Yair. But yeah, that's right. He, he, he had the injury first. Then in the rematch, he goes, gets beat down in round one. Very close to a stoppage. Rallies back. And then the jiu-jitsu was just too much for Yair. I think that Diego is arguably one of the toughest matchups in the USC for, for Brian Ortega. Yeah. Yes. You know? Solid striker, very young, explosive. Good reach and, and size. Yeah. And the way Brian Ortega fights is not the way Dan Iggy fights, even though Brian Ortega probably is better than him. Yeah. On the striking. Yeah. Agreed. All right. All right. So we're going with Diego. It sounds Diego like we're both, we're both on Diego Lopez in that fight. Let's move yep. on to the co-main. We'll circle back and look at some of these other fights too, but I want to cover the, the three main fights here. 
We got oh, Alexa man. Grasso here versus Valentina. It feels like this fight's happened five or ten times. I don't times. even care about this fight, to be <laughs> honest with you. Do you want to watch that? I kind of want to see Alexa. I, I kind of want to see if she can... Uh, if she can. I mean, she's the younger fighter here. I, I think she has a chance to... to, to I don't uh, know, get man. Get this fight Va done and put it... Valentina Chevichenko, three years or four years ago, she was but like... Did you see... You remember what happened in the last fight? No. So it was like a, a judge like completely messed up on the fight and like... The, the the math didn't even make sense like based on the, the scorecard and it should have been a split decision for Valentina they ruled it a draw you remember that I remember that so uh, that's why this fight's happening and it's for USC Noche so it is what it is um, I gotta lean towards Alexa Grasso here I believe she is a minus so on Fliff right now I believe so, she's a minus so you think Alexa, Alexa Grasso will win I think by decision or submission, but I think decision. But you thought you thought she lost the last fight. I thought it was a very close fight, but the one judge did make a big error. I think if you were going to score it for her, you had to do it in a different way where it just didn't make sense logically how how it was scored for how it was scored as a draw. I I can't remember. I got to go back and look at that, but no. I, I do think that it's a very even matchup. But I think that. You know, the, even the, I think the age factor is going to be big on this one at 31 for Alexa Grasso. So yeah. I'm picking her as a small favorite. Who you like? For Alexa Grasso, I will just because you say all that stuff, brother. I'm not falling too much. Sway you, bro. You, gotta, yeah. you sure? But yeah, brother. I don't know. We can probably leave this one out of the parlay, though. Yeah, I I would not put that on parlay yeah. because the first fight Valentina was winning. Yeah. And then got caught, right? By the choke. Yep. By the choke. And then the second one. Valentina should be winning. Should be win should should have won. Well, how do I say that? Should have won? She she should have won. He should have won. Yeah. But then the, the judges mess up. Who knows what's gonna happen on the third one? Yeah. This is like Moreno and, and Figueiredo. Figueiredo, yeah. You know, yeah. you never you never know. Man, at that time, we could bet on UFC. And I lost a lot of money. When, when was this? On the second one. I you you bet, you bet Moreno or Figueiredo? I beat I I I, I bet, bet I love Figueiredo. Yeah. Because I thought, okay, the first fight, he like they had a draw, right? Yeah. Let me pull it up so because they've yeah. had so many fights, it's like confusing. Yeah. I know one of the fights he was uh complaining about health issues and the, the stomach was bad. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first fight. Figueredo lost a five-round decision against Moreno. The second fight, Moreno choked out Figueredo in the third round. And then the third fight, Figueredo got PK. Figue that was the fourth. Hold on. Figueredo won the first one? <laughs> I'm so confused, bro. Yeah, Figueredo won the first one. Which one is the first? I'm struggling here, bro. Let me... Let me. Um, okay, so... The first fight... Was in 2020. Does that sound right? Yeah, here we go. So, yeah, Brayna Moreno won the first two. Then Figueredo won the third. And then Moreno won the fourth. Really? Let me really check this, bro, because so I'm not remember that. Three and one. But and one, I was, cannot, very, and I one cannot, was very controversial, I believe. The first fight was very controversial. It was a, it was a close decision. <laughs> yes, let me check. So, they've, yes. No, 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 no. The first one was a draw. I think you... It, the first one was a draw. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The first one, so you see, man. Second Maddie, fight, Moreno subbed him. Yes, that's it, the one you lost money. Yes, on. because now I'm gonna make my point. Yeah, yeah. The first one, Davidson Figueiredo, uh, he he was the champion because they draw. Yeah, yeah. Because he was the champion at the time. Right. And then he was complaining. No, oh, I was healthy shoes. My bad. And I say, okay, next time he's gonna finish the guy. <laughs> so. Put put the money <laughs> and then he got finished he by got Moreno. The third Brother, round. I was watching. Did you bet him the third time though when he won a decision? No, no. You were like, I'm done. I'm giving no. up. No, because then UFC stopped. Uh, to, that's I, 2022. 2022. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So as soon as UFC say you cannot bet, I stopped. I stopped that's betting. When you started to like give your boys money and on the side and like, no, no. no. <laughs> No, brother. No, 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 I'm done. I'm just kidding, bro. Just so, kidding. yeah. The first one, 2021. And the second one, 2022, I could not bet. So, but, yeah. but that was a huge mistake, betting mistake. Yeah. It's hard to bet, bro. It's not easy. This It's hard to bet on anything. Like, forget MMA, any sport. I it's, think it's, MMA is the easiest one. You say that, but the, the favorites can Because be I watch MMA all the time. I'm training right. MMA. 
All right, well then, give me give me the picks, bro. Let's go to the main event. Where I think I'm on. Well, so I'm on Grasso and Lopez. Are you on Grasso and Lopez? Or are you taking Valentina? Yeah. All right, so we're both aligned on the featherweight bout, the co-main. Let's go to the main event. This one's very interesting because Sean O'Malley has been an underdog the past two months. As of this week, he is now flipped to the bet and favorite almost everywhere. So a lot of people will say that Marab here is a very good value spot, right? Like Marab has beat down guys that O'Malley has struggled with. Marab put on a very good performance against Peter Yan. Peter Yan arguably beat Sean O'Malley. It's a very close split decision, right? Yeah. Marab has looked dominant against Henry Cejudo, picked him up on his shoulder, ran him across the octagon, flipped him down. He's looked very, very good, right? So the, the question is, is O'Malley able to find the chin early or does it end up being a long night if he's not able to fight in this guy in Marab? Yeah, I don't know. I'm so curious about the fight because I was watching a couple old fights of Sean O'Malley. Yeah. And he was not that good. He was losing to Andres Sokimach. He lose to Chito, uh, like uh, the the fight against Mochino. He was not like, yeah. He took like how many punches to 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 the judge to stop the fight. But he is a great striker. He's, he's a sniper. Is, sniper and yeah. his fight against Aljamain Sterling showed that, like, he's not the best grappler. But the way he controlled the distance with the with his kickboxing is is just very 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 good. Yeah. But Merabi, on the other hand, is just relentless. Yeah. But he got cut a couple times, right? Marlon yeah. Moraes and his Cejudo. Yeah. He struggles with the punches. And that's the argument, right? That O'Malley can find a knee or a left hook or something. You know. So let's say you put $100 on, on Merabi. On Merab, how much you make? You would double your money pretty much. And what about Sean Mali? It's a very close. It's like a pick em. It's like even almost. But O'Malley's a small favorite. So if you put $100 on O'Malley, you get back like 190 you put a hundred on Marab, you're gonna get back. Like I'm going with Marab, but yeah. yeah, I'm going with Marab. But let me tell you something. I think if Marab wins, UFC going to be mad. <laughs> How much money and time and like production they they spend on Sean O'Malley? Yeah. So you think if this fight goes to the scorecards, do you think O'Malley is automatically gonna win then? I don't know. Marab is Mexican, right? <laughs> is is <laughs> UFC? I think O'Malley is apparently Mexican too, bro. Really? I got to look this up because I don't know how Mexican he Everybody's is. Everybody's Mexican nowadays, man. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm so confused. I, I don't know either. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So, I just read. Even Diego Lopez is Mexican <laughs> right now. What the fuck? So, it says Sean O'Malley's wife and daughter are Mexican. So, his relation to them, Sean says he's Mexican. I don't know, bro. I can't keep up. Nah, bro. No, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is like... This is, is like the people nowadays, they say they are dog. They are, no, <laughs> brother, no. If you're born in America, you're American. If you're yeah. born in Brazil, you're in Brazil. So let me ask you something. If you were Marab, you know, a grappler versus striker here, what would your strategy be in this fight? Like, walk me through it. Shoot. First <laughs> thing. Yeah, but just like, just shoot? Just like that. Even miss. First even second. First second. First second. And you don't, what about, you don't have to worry about the, I mean, look at that knee up the middle he gave Cheeto. But, but, but think about that. Yeah. The longer he waits, yeah. the longer Shomali adjusts yeah. and read them. Saying, don't give him a second to even breathe. Second. Yeah. And, and you have to take the chance because you have to approach, you have to cut the distance. But the problem is, he's going to be waiting for that. Yeah. So you have to do that right away. And not only with takedowns, but with punches. You have to rush. Right. On, on, because once he starts to connect the punches, Merab. If he shoots and if he grabs the legs, he's going to get the takedown. Yeah. And then the second round, we saw that against Peter Young. But Peter Young was, were exhaust, exhausted at yeah. the time. So right. he, I think he could do that with, with Sean Mali. I think he, if he waits, we're going to see the same thing that we did against Aljamo Sterling. He yeah. was waiting, waiting, waiting. Then he went and yeah. he got cut. Yeah. So... It's going to be, I, I think, and I think Merab will do that yeah. because he always does that. All right? Right, right. My English is getting better, bro. Very good. You bro. see it's that? Very, very good. I did that, that, he did that. <laughs> what the fuck is going on, my brother? So and I'm, I, I, have, I have not been speaking English for a long time. Really? Yeah. Because fucking Brazil, all Brazilians, the American top team, yeah. 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 
Let me ask you. Let me ask you a crazy question. As the the gamblers, the gamblers question in me. The gamblers. I can't even speak right now. Uh, I I can't even speak English, and I, I only speak English. All right. So, does Sean O'Malley? Is there any chance that Sean O'Malley could submit Marab? Any chance? Because a lot of people talk about this dude is underrated jujitsu, right? That is always a chance. That's MMA. And Marab's coming forward, and he's going to be shooting a ton. Is there a chance O'Malley could find his net? Because it would pay. We'd be retired, bro. If we bet on that, we we retire afterwards. Um, let, let me let me see Mirab's Mirab's record. Cool. Let's pull up Mirab's topology. Yeah, Mirab's topology. Mirab topology. Yeah. yeah, I don't. So I think he he was submitted by Ricky Simone, but a guillotine. Yeah, but he's a wrestler back in 2018. Yeah, but the guillotine is. I always think those guillotines are live against the wrestlers, bro. I leave the neck out there. I'm yeah, take they always live. But yeah. let me check. Okay, so he lost. That was a grappling. grappling. That was a grappling. Yeah, go go back. If you scroll down. Scroll down. There we go. Um, scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down to the to the losses. This is Sambo loss. Yeah, that was an MMA. Yeah. Yeah, Ricky Simone. There's his last loss in MMA. No, that was a that was a guillotine. Ricky yeah. Simone guillotine. And then yeah. keep scrolling. Decision loss there back in. He lost to Ricky Bandejas. Yeah, that was a long time ago. So he's been submitted once, and Ricky Simone's got a pretty good guillotine. But yeah, I just yeah. think it's it, anything's possible in this sport, right? Whoever would have thought Yuri Prohaska would have submitted Glover, right? Yeah. That's impossible. That's more yeah, impossible that could than have, this. Yeah, that's more impossible than that. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm not seeing because yeah. because even if Sean Mali pulls guillotine, mm -hmm. he's going to end up on the bottom and gonna have to walk his way up. So. I'm trying to see. I don't think the betting odds are, are out anywhere for something like that, but I do want to see. Oh, wow. They are out. 19 to 1, bro. A $100 bet would, will give you 2000 back. So a $1,000 bet is going to give you 20 grand. A $1,000 going to get 20 grand. 20 grand. If you put $1,000, 20 grand. 20 back. grand. On O'Malley by submission. That's pretty You're crazy. losing the you're, you're losing <laughs> the thousand dollars. Yeah. It won't be the first time I lose a thousand. Yeah. Man. Yeah. All right, so here's what I... Brother, let's put a... <laughs> let's let's make a... A parlay. No, let's make a fucking Bitcoin wallet. <laughs> Every time that you want to throw your money out, they're going to say, hey, just, just... Just send it to Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, send it what? to Bitcoin because that's your better. Bitcoin address? What? No. Are you going to give me your we address? Could, no, we could do the, the show. Show me hey, the money. You want to see my Bitcoin, bro? I saw. I saw. You saw which one? Oh, Coinbase. You saw, oh, you saw Coinbase. Yeah, but that's not your money. That's my money. No. Not your money. How's it not my money? Imagine if government wants to seize your money. <laughs> I thought that's the whole point of Bitcoin, bro. Exactly. That's why you have to take out your exchange. Oh, because... Oh, all right. Go ahead. Plug your sponsor, bro. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> no. Plug, you gotta plug them. About, no, gotta no, plug. no. I want you to plug them right now. This is a perfect opportunity. That's a perfect opportunity. Thank you so yeah. much, Swamp Bitcoin. <laughs> but Swamp Bitcoin is the same thing as Coinbase. It's a... But it's more... Exchange. Right, no, right. it's exchange. So what's You're, the difference? That is no different. I'm you not buy, educated on this No, stuff, no. Bro. It's the same thing. But the problem is, if your, if, your, if your wallet, if your Bitcoin is on exchange... Eventually, they can seize your money. It's like the money on your bank account. I got you. That's yeah. not your real money. So how do you keep this it is not credit, on the, how right? Do you keep it not on an exchange. Then? How you don't keep money on the bank? What? If you don't wanna, if you if you want your money, but you don't wanna, you you want take out of the bank. What you do? Oh, cash. You you have cash. Yeah, yeah. And you have gold, right? Yeah. So 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 you have to learn how to make a like offline wallet. So how do you do it? Man, that's fucking that's that's a lot of work, brother. They, do you they, have one? Yes. They got you don't have you can do on paper, brother. There is a program that generates the seeds but that is the lose, phrase, but if you lose the info, it's gone, right? Yeah, if you lose if you lose <laughs> if you lose the, the 24 words, it's done. Oh you have 24 words yeah. that are generate generate automatically. Yeah. By the pick seeder, you know, and yeah. that's a very complex method to so do. How do you, you can buy you can buy a cold wallet and do, but then you trust in other institution people that yeah that makes. It's it's not an easy talk. Here's my philosophy: I'm not giving the government a reason to seize my money, so I'm I'm gonna just keep it in my brother. But let me bro. say, do you know what happened in 1971? What 
they they no 1931 yeah. USA government took all the gold they made gold illegal do you know about that mm. you know if you had gold in 31 you were a criminal so you had to hand to the government and they pay you oh, whatever okay. so the, the price was for it. they give cash you okay, for okay. it but you're not allowed to have gold yeah and then the price two months later <laughs> doubled because the <laughs> government had all the gold and that, 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 that's a fucking crazy thing to do. But they're going to do the same so thing you, with Bitcoin. But you have that type of external wallet. Yes. You, how much money you got in there? A lot? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> uh, all right. I want to go higher or lower, higher or lower. Higher or lower. Higher or lower, 25,000. Uh, it's high. I have good money. <laughs> I have good money. 100,000. 100,000. And, 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 and I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. But every time I put more. Yeah. You know? So when do you put more, though? What? what like at what time? When you get paid by USC? When you get a brand deal? Like when do you put more That's money? That's fucked into it? up because, because I don't know how to read the charts. I don't do like yeah. I don't trade and stuff. Yeah. So when I feel it's okay, I I I get some money and I buy, and I feel the price is right, I, I buy it. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So final pick for the main event. Let's get back on track here. You're going with Marab. It sounds like we're going Marab. And going Marab. I'm uh, I'm so torn on this fight, bro. I don't know what to do with it. I've I've thought that Marab was actually a tough matchup for O'Malley for so long, and I really believe that now it's the opposite. Because if Marab was a do finisher, you think it's an easy fight for sure. No, no, I don't think it's an easy fight for either of them, right? But mm -hmm. hear me out. Here's my philosophy. Do if, you know an easy fight? What? Benoit Sandini. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I'm gonna be in France for that, bro. Uh -huh. so. Um, what's the French? What's the French currency, bro? I gotta bet this shit before I go there. <laughs> Don't even talk to me about French. <laughs> but here, hear me out on this, French. okay? Hear me out on this. I always thought Marab or Marab was a tough matchup for a for a Mali, right? But now flip flop because Marab isn't really a finisher on the ground. So every round, this goes back up to the feet, and all it takes is one sequence for a Mali to find. A shot on the feet. If Marab had all these really good submissions on the ground, or even ground and pound, and could get O'Malley out of there, I would be so much more likely to back him. But I just feel like he could dominate round one, right? Like you said, he could just shoot and beat O'Malley. Could maybe get five punches off the whole first round, right? And Mar Marab dominates. But then the fight gets right back to round two on the feet, right? And Marab's gas tank isn't going to fade. There's no doubt about that. But it's still hard for me to think that. Rob's going to be able to do that for five straight rounds against a sniper with O'Malley's reach and his knees up the middle and all the things that he does. So I'm very torn, but right now I think I'm going to have to pick O'Malley. I'm very torn though. And it's the worst time to bet him because he was an underdog for like a month. Now he's a favorite, you know? So if you guys were going to put money down on O'Malley, you'd probably miss the train, should have done it weeks ago no you should do on the beginning because he was a he, he was like he was a big underdog he was plus plus like 180 plus money he was a very big underdog so. yeah he right, was well, plus money we got to go diego lopez as one leg of the parlay agreed on that diego lopez okay so that's our one leg let's scroll down i don't know how you feel about this but i think we should go how with manuel torres is the second one yes manuel torres for sure and then do you want to add one more or keep it at two Let's talk about this fight. What do you think Manuel Torres is going to be a good? I think Manuel, Manuel, so click, if you go to Manuel Torres' uh, history here, so the guy was knocking out everyone, right? His first three fights in the UFC, round one knockout, round one knockout, round one knockout. Just elite. And everywhere, let me tell right? you something. But then he Dun takes Duncan. Duncan is good. And he takes Duncan to the ground and subs him. And I cashed on that. I had Torres by submission plus 600 on that I fight. I don't really remember the fight. So it showed how well-rounded he is, right? Ignacio Abamanda's tall, lanky guy, good striking. I think he takes this fight to the ground similar Let to the Let me tell you something. I, I have trained with Duncan. He's over here yeah. on American Top Team. I have been training with him for a long time. He is a he is a knockout artist. Yeah. V a lot of power. Yeah. Uh, he's not the best jiu-jitsu. And that's why Torres took advantage. But, but good scrambles, yeah. good at getting back. It's not easy to submit him. It's not easy. He's yeah. not easy. I train with him. He's he's a solid fighter. So then th that tells this guy is good because Mora is a good striker too. Camacho good striker. So yeah. I think I think the odds are not 
I think the odds are wrong because Manuel Torres is way better than Bahamondes. I agree. I agree. Now, the one thing that did impress me with Bahamondas is that the, the Ludovic Klein fight. He did go the distance with Ludovic Klein. Um, you know, just surviving that fight. Klein's a monster. Yeah. He he looked Klein's very good. Um, yeah. but Klein did out you know, take him down three to zero, three to zero on takedowns and outstruck him by 13. And that's the problem. Ludovic is a monster, but nobody knows him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he looked good against uh, Thiago. Thiago. So I didn't watch that fight. I'm I'm with you. I think Manuel Torres is the most is the one of the better favorites on the card as far as price point. You know, minus one twenty. I think he should be a minus one seventy, one eighty favorite at least, maybe two to one. I think you know he just has the jujitsu in his back pocket. He's got the power in his hands. He's a finisher. He's got more finishing equity. So I'm down to throw him in the parlay here. You in? Yes. All right, do you want to go one more fight or do you just want to play it safe mm-hmm. on two? L- let's see. Let's see. Let's keep scrolling. I think Gilbert's not here today, so yeah. Maybe we go. And, and we could he's go. Gonna, we, he's going to hurt the parlay, right? But he's not losing. The Chee Wee Wee. Not losing. <laughs> Chee Wee Wee. Hey, Chee Wee Wee. All right, so Don't get offended, <laughs> brother. You're not, that, you're not that ugly. Just a little bit. <laughs> All right, we got a good cheat. I'm ugly too, brother. That, right. <laughs> you know, on that video, people say, hey, you don't have a fucking mirror. You ugly. Okay, and ugly too, brother. Relax. Hey. What, what, what would you like to say to Chi Wee Wee, bro? If he ever wanted to come on the pod, say something brother, to him for, right now. Brother, forgive bro. me. Forgive me about the video because even Gilbert Burns was telling people that, no, I was not trying... I was not trying to be disrespectful. I was trying to be funny, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just, I'm a comedian, bro. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I'm about, I'm about to to go like Joe Rogan, make money. <laughs> Let's right. go. So you want to put Chi Wee Wee in the parlay? Chi Wee Wee. But do we take him by by submission or just money line? Because he's too expensive on the money line. Uh, so let him out. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Who do you think we could put in the parlay? Uh, I think we leave him out, bro. Yeah. So it's, too it's too let's risky. It's too risky. Let's chew. Next week we do. Yeah. All right. But the next week is going to be the France car, right? No, no. Because no. after that, we don't have any fights. Or we have. Right, right. Yeah. After this weekend is a break week, right? Yeah. I think I'm so. Pretty Let sure me check. A break week. Yeah. I think it's a break week. And then they're going to have. UFC 305. Yeah, Moicano vs. Sunday. So, Manuel Torres, minus 130, leg number one, boys. And we're adding in Diego Lopez. Oh, William Gomez and Joan Anderson Brito is the co-main event. I didn't know about that. On, on your card? Yeah. No, no that's not possible. What no, about no, the other guys? No, no. It's uh, it's Brendan Allen is supposed to be the co-main. Why do they have that as the fourth fight right now? It should be Brendan Allen and Imavov as the co-main, I believe. But you see on the... On I see team? it, but I think it's wrong. Yeah, it's fucking you wrong. You can't put because, William yeah. Gomez and Jordan no. yeah. That's a good fight, but it's... Brendan Allen's going to be the co-main there. That's a very good I fight. love Matt Favola on that card. I think it's a great pick. Ludovic Klein's so on the card. So we're going to do a uh, podcast about that that fight? Yeah. Like uh-huh. we're going to do parlays next 100%, week? 100%, bro. 100%. We're going to be our dog of the week, bro. All right. This what parlay. if I bet on Sunday? <laughs> on the I mean, parlay? It's up to you, bro. Huh? It's up to you. Throw right, some money. This parlay, boys. <laughs> this parlay, a hundred dollar parlay is gonna return you two hundred and sixty-seven dollars. It's plus one sixty-seven. Manuel Torres, leg number one. Diego Lopez, leg number two. Tell us in the comments if you're tailing this on the Fliff app in the YouTube comments right now. We gotta get back on track. If we hit this parlay, we are now up on the year on the show parlay. So we really need to hit this one. What are your final thoughts, bro, on this card or your fight coming up? Final thoughts on anything right now. Brother, thank you so much for having me. It's always great to talk to you guys. And you guys on the comment, please like, share, subscribe. And, and the problem is we are fighters. Otherwise, we'll be doing more, doing more podcasts. But thank you so much for all the support. And I'm telling you, I cannot afford to lose. Next week, you're going to do a podcast, but I'm winning. I'm going to fucking France. I'm going over there to beat the fuck out of Benoit Sandani, get some fucking cash, buy some Bitcoin, invest in real estate. You know what's <laughs> up. Real rich people invest in real estate. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Thank you so much and show some love for the podcast. Podcast was small because we need to do like, it's like 10, 
It's almost 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's almost 11. We, and we were watching President... We were watching uh, Kamala Trump. Harris versus Donald Trump, so... Brother, don't yeah. vote Democrat. That's the truth, <laughs> brother. If, let me tell you something, my brother. I was not supposed to talk about politics, but I did a, I did a video, I, I did a podcast with a Brazilian motherfucker before that. One of the smartest motherfucker that I ever see. And we, we were like two hours talking about fucking politics and economics and Bitcoin. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to talk about that. But if you vote, in, if you vote fucking Democrat, you, you dumb. And if Kamala wins, I'm going back to Brazil, brother. <laughs> All right, we're going to end on that note, boys. Just don't hold Moicano to that. <laughs> I'm going to Brazil, brother. <laughs>